the thing I loved about when I first got into TV music was it meant as an like an artist you could be a different artist every month. You know, if you're in a band, you have to do the same thing for the rest of your life. You have to play rock music or jazz music or but like me, I can suddenly be like, I'm making electronic music this month. And then this month I'm gonna go and write for a jazz band. And then this month I'm gonna try and write some string quartets. And so I would use TV as a like a bed to try all these ideas out and learn and experiment, make mistakes and just keep going, trying different things the whole time. So I loved doing TV and I'd always approach my work with, even if the show was, you know, how should we say, not what people would, you know, not necessarily the highest quality show. I mean, I worked on really good shows a lot of the time, but I would always put everything I had into the music. I never looked at it. Like people before I, when I started getting work, people really looked down on TV music. They were kind of like, I just do that for money. You know, it's like, it's not my real job. You know, it's not what I really care about, but I really cared about doing it. So I'd put everything I had into the music. And as a result, I think I got a lot of work because people could see that I really cared about what I did. Uh, and I'd treat everything, how can I make this, whether it's like a cooking show to like a really great drama to like a, you know, a weird comedy show. I'd always put as much of myself into it as I could to create the best work. I love trying to not repeat myself. So I love trying to create, I love the idea when you, like you don't know what I'm gonna come up with. Like my favorite kind of composers are ones where you go, what are they gonna do? Like, how are they gonna do this? Uh, and then you hear it and you're like, oh cool, or like nah. But I, I always wanna surprise myself, I guess, and hopefully if anyone cares, surprise other people. Years ago I did this TV show called Lad's Army and it was like a reality show about going back to the 1950s and there was like no real money to do it. I wanted to put live players but I couldn't. So I was like, okay, let's use a kazoo. So I did like break beats and kazoos. You know kazoos? Like, bah, bah, just. And then so I started writing a whole score with like that and just sample break beats and it was great. And it's like one of those things I still think is one of my proudest moments because it's on a really big TV channel and I was getting this really crazy music on it. And it'd be way more interesting than a big orchestral score mm -hmm. because it was different. If you've got good people around you, like who you're working with, you can do anything. When anything becomes too corporate, like television has got very corporate in the last 10 years. And with that comes people wanting safety. They want stuff they've heard before. And that stuff's boring, I don't like that. So I always want to try and see what I can do different. But Nick Murphy, the director, who's a fantastic director, we've worked a lot in TV and some of my best work I've done with him. I always know with Nick, I'm gonna to get to create some really good music because um, he always pushes you. I've never done a horror film before and it was like trying to work out how do you, how do you create all these scares and all this kind of stuff but try not to make it too cliched. And again, you know, it's like building, how do we build interesting melodies and ideas? So I did, on that I did loads of stuff with recorders because it was set at school and I kind of thought the recorder was a good instrument because it's associated with school. So I created all these strange textures out of out of tune recorders as a starting block. And that was a good way to create, hopefully, something that was different to a normal horror score. One day, Ridley had come in and he'd seen The Awakening. And he loved, he just, he, like, like, not a lot of people saw The Awakening, but one person did that made such a big difference, and that's Ridley Scott. And he loved it, and he came in and telling everyone how much he loved it, and like, they got to watch it. So one day I get to meet Ridley Scott, and I just think I'm meeting him, you know, to, like, just meet Ridley Scott. I don't know what you do, you just meet them and... So we had this really nice chat about films, about, you know, like Britain, you know, creating, just creativity. He said this great thing to me. He was like, I had, uh, he was telling me that when he got into the film business, he had spent years in advertising, learning everything to do through um, just making ads. And that's how he learned his craft. He said, I did like my 10,000 years, I'm sorry, my 10,000 hours in the garage. Advertising was my garage. That's how I learned how to make films. And he said, you've done it in TV. You've done 10,000 hours in the garage. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I was like, okay, I have a cool story. I met Ridley Scott. A couple of weeks later, I get this phone call saying, Ridley wants you to do the movie. And I was like, what? really? What? Okay. <laughs> we had this moment, like I was like kind of petrified working with Ridley at the beginning. And I watched loads of videos online about people talking about Ridley who'd worked with him. And it's funny, I found this one with Jerry Goldsmith and he was still really angry that Ridley had made him change the opening to Alien. 
because uh, he'd originally written this really bombastic opening to Alien and Ridley made him change it to this piece that Jerry was like, oh, it's rubbish, I wrote it in five minutes. But we all know that opening is like one of the greatest moments in cinema. It's such a great piece. And I, I don't like to say it, but the composer was wrong and the director was right, okay? During the process, me and Ridley were arguing over this scene in the movie and I was saying, look, try this. It's like, I don't like it, so try it like this. And I kept... I kept pushing this idea for this one scene. And then uh, he turns to me and says, you know what, I had like the same problem years ago on uh, Alien. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, I, like, I, you don't know I know this story, but I'm like, okay, you win. We change it. <laughs> and I was like, wow, to like, suddenly be in the same frame as like Jerry Goldsmith uh, is, is amazing because he's a fantastic composer. And I'm kind of thinking, why am I here? 